All right, so today we're gonna repair the windshield wiper on the passenger side of our PD4106 bus. So this is an air motor, and um, what it does is when we turn the valve on, so at first we thought the valves were bad, and they were because they were leaking, so we've replaced both the valves. So on these old buses, there's one valve that controls either side. So they aren't synchronized or anything like that, like in a newer vehicle. But anyway, when we turn on the left or the driver's side valve, it operates just fine. It goes back and forth, does what it's supposed to. When we turn on the one for the passenger side, what this thing does is, is it will go and then it gets stuck kind of right there. It'll get stuck at the bottom. And then if you kind of push it up, it'll, it'll do a full cycle and then get stuck on the bottom again. So you push it and it'll do a full cycle. So it, the movement of it is fine. It feels tight. It doesn't feel loose or anything, but we think some of the seals and stuff have gone bad. And so they make a rebuild kit for it. And so we purchased this from Luke in New Jersey and it consists of a few plastic pieces, some um, wiper grease. So I guess the grease that's in there and then a bunch of gaskets, screws, seals and o-rings so um we are going to try to rebuild this thing so we've got the manual the the specific part that mentions what we're supposed to do to take this apart and things like that so we'll be following the manual as closely as possible we did have a little bit of trouble getting it out which i think is worth mentioning because um, I think it's been out before because it had a bunch of putty all over it and that putty was acting kind of like a sticking agent and it wasn't allowing it to, to break free. So we had to, we had to take a small little sledgehammer and um, a little block of wood and we just put on there and I would gently tapped it on the front and Michelle kind of pulled it from the back and eventually it did break free. So anyway, that's what we're working on today. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Is that good enough? Yeah. Well, I can't. Now your arm's just in the way. There's that. So let me see if this pops off at all. Do you see that, Katya? Yep. There it goes. Okay. So do you see? So do you see how there's like that thing and that thing? Is that I, even there? I, I mean, is it, it was, gone? It was. It's. Do you want to show? Like, literally, there's nothing on there. Yeah, that gasket's severely deteriorated. Is there so. a disc? Um, sort See of. See this little... Is this it? it says the disc yeah. is like... Yeah, I think so. It's disgusting. Did, do it, did we get a new disc? Yeah, we did. that little disc. Oh man, yeah, these are in terrible shape. <clears throat> Gotten a little bit of the glue off. Whatever it was there. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. There's topsy. Okay, how does this come off? Just kind of like that. All right, so the next thing it says is remove yeah. screw 41 oh my God. and washer 40, which attached the motor transmission shaft, motor transmission shaft into the wiper motor. So where's 35? 35 is right there. Oh, okay, so apparently there's these little screws.
more screws together with this, and we'll put them up there. These are bolts. <coughs> yeah, bolts, whatever. <coughs> so with a screwdriver, yeah. what you want to do is you always want to push down and then turn. And it can be very, it can be pretty hard. So just pop them out quick enough, hard enough. Yeah. So what I do you is have I to push, push down, down while you're doing it, and then see. It pops. Mm -hmm. Pops my hand to an, an old man. <laughs> so these, you want to try those? Yeah. So what you want to do is put your thumb on top. Um, and then yeah, let me put it at the bottom for you. Should pop you off. really can't, like with these valves. Laser blade. Yeah, Oof. Like that. Oh, and that's so the. You said there's an O ring. So there's the pin that we got to right. unscrew. Yeah. So see, those are bad. They're not terrible, but they're not great. Okay. Okay. So we remove two from here. Place that in a vise so that attaching screws are up. Right, like this. Yeah. Tighten the vise only enough to hold the body and remove the screws, number 15, which attach the piston bodies together. You're your own vise. My hands are kind of like a vise. Okay, go ahead. So now you have to pull that apart. Right, so we encountered our first little problem, and that's this guy stripped out. So we used an easy out and it's actually the first time I've ever gotten that to work, <laughs> but it did. We drilled the hole like it said and put the thing in there and it, it got it out. So now we need a new one of these. So we're going to have to go to the, we're going to have to go to the hardware store and, and buy another one this exact length with this thread pitch. So that's on the to-do list. So whoops. Uh, uh. Um, okay, hold on. That wasn't supposed to happen yet. <laughs> okay, yes, it says slowly. Okay, this time slowly. We'll go, this, this time we'll go, go slow. slowly. Oh, there we go. <laughs> lift off the upper piston body. The you upper piston slow. body. Okay. Gear uh -huh. and gear rack. Okay, so, so this whole thing. Oh. Okay, I don't know where that goes. I think it goes on the other side here. Yeah, it does. Okay, so the whole gear. Your rack. Okay, there's. Grab that, babe. Okay, just pull that up. Yep. So th there's a weird thing here in that there's a. There's yeah. just a ring kind of hanging out in space there. So. Okay, so this went like this. This went like this. Nobody knows where this is. And then, you want to just that, put that back on there? That actually went probably the other way. Do you see the wear mark? Oh. We'll use the wear marks as a clue. <laughs> Note the position of alignment marks. Did you see that? No. Nope. So now that we've gone ahead and taken everything apart the way it said in the book, um, the first step was to clean these surfaces up. They're going to have a new gasket put in them. Um, same with this side and this side here. So we did that very carefully with a small razor blade. So we just kind of cleaned up the edges and then used some acetone to kind of clean up the housings. Um, one thing that we did figure out in the book, it describes this wheel with a shaft through it, um, which is up here. I don't know if that's super easy to see, but ours doesn't have that. Ours had this thing instead. <laughs> so I don't know how this is like a wheel and a rod, but this is what is in the place. Um, so the wheel and the rod thing went in here. And this is what ours has in place of that. So we're just going to put that back in um, and go with that. So anyway, the next step now is to take these things apart. And there's little rods in here that we're going to pull out. Um, it actually says to push them through. And that is what's included in the kit. And I believe that's these things. So anyway, that's what we're going to try next. So we have to unscrew that little pin. Okay. So that. Okay, so the little pin is that actually thing. first. Okay. okay. Okay, yeah, it is unscrewing. Okay, do I need to like not lose its place or? It doesn't say we have a replacement for that. 
we have a replacement for this. Yeah, there's a new one of those. Okay, so there it is removed. So, okay. yep, and then push out those two rods. Okay, so does that, does it push out with that then? Okay, I need something kind of more. I don't want to poke this too no. hard. It says one's aluminum yeah, and one's okay. nylon, is that right? metal? I don't know. And I don't think there's a way that it goes. And then this one. Okay. Yeah. Th this one looks plastic. Yeah. To me. So maybe this one's aluminum. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now it says remove the rubber O-rings from the rods. Well, no. We're, we're probably just going to replace the whole rod, right? Well, I know, but... Okay. I don't know. That's... So I think we just slide these in instead of replacing the O-rings, which you can do on these. We just well, got it's new weird ones. though because why would it tell you to do that? Uh huh. When it shows that there's replacements for those, even in here it says that there's replacements for those. Well, why would you replace the O-rings on something you're not going to use? I don't know. Okay, well let's, maybe we'll have to come back to that. Okay. Okay, so it says, clean the valve body, end plates, mounting screws, and rods with solvent, which right. we started, but we need, I guess we gotta clean all that stuff. the screws, mm -hmm. and wipe rubber O-rings with a clean cloth. Okay, um, so then the next section is the wiper motor piston disassembly. That's this. Okay. So let's put grease all over these. Let me start getting like the new parts out. Okay, let me align this. Those the discs? Those must be the discs. Okay. Okay, do we have the little... Do you need the new? Are you, uh -huh. Did you put those back in already? Yep. Okay, so that's the new pin. I'm trying to put it towards the camera. Does it just screw all the way down? I mean, it, ju it just says thread the valve pin. Okay, I'm just gonna go till it seats. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yep, and it feels good, it feels smooth. I have no idea. It's weird that it's green. Yeah. Bogies are green. Okay. Can you kind of green. make sure that you're showing that omniocular you remember what that is huh? mm -hmm. you should read tonight mm. Does this have grease on it? oh we haven't even touched that babe we'll probably have to clean that up what is it it's just part of this whole wiper assembly how far does this go I don't know. Are those cardboard? I don't, they're like cork. Like okay, so those are in. So this actually goes in here, not in the other thing. And so this. Yeah, if you want. <clears throat> okay, that, yeah, that looks right. Okay, so you want these other screws? Yep. Okay, I think that's right. Okay. So that, that has one. the black thing in the yep. cap. <clears throat> yep. Okay, and this goes towards the eye. What? 
All right, so we've got this part done. Um, we've screwed in the end caps. They've got the new pistons in them. This is new, this little thing in the back. We've screwed that all the way in. It's got a new piston assembly down in the bottom. Um, it's these cork things are new and in the kit. And then there's a rubber um, gasket that goes in the cap that's in behind that. So that's in here. So anyway, that's what these little guys were. And so anyway, um, that is now all put back together. So I think that's ready to go. And so now we're going to work on the, the piston part. All right, so we've gotten to this part. And what the book says is to remove these screws, pull this whole thing apart, and then clean everything up, slide the O-rings back on. And that's kind of how you rebuild this. The thing is, the only thing we're replacing is these O-rings. There isn't anything internal to here that uses any kind of um, O-ring or washer or anything like that. So I don't really feel the need to take this whole assembly apart. I'm gonna make sure it's tight. And then what I'm gonna do is just use a pick to pull this gasket out and then just slide the new one back in. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't just do that as opposed to taking this whole thing apart. I don't know, maybe if someone's watching this and they have a lot more experience than me, um, they can give me a good reason why you would pull this thing all apart, but I'm just gonna clean it really well, put these O-rings back in. I guess if we put it all back together, it doesn't work. Maybe it was because we skipped that step, but I'm a little bit nervous taking these out just because this is so old. Um, I just don't want to, you know, risk stripping one of these screws. We've already stripped one of the screws in the housing that we're going to have to go get. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. So that's the way we're going to work it. And one thing to note on this gear here is that there's a dot there. So that dot um, goes in alignment with a dot that is on this gear here. So you can see the dot there. Can you see yeah, that? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. And so when we put it back together, we have to make sure that when we when we when we line these back up that those gears um match up like that. So, anyway, that's just one of the things that it said to note in the book. Um, these are significantly worn. You can see that there's a flat there's a flat profile worn into these and so they've been doing their job but I think they're done. <laughs> so we've got to put grease okay. all over this this kit. Yeah this is like liberal all over the rack and the o-rings. Right. So this so this motor assembly went like that this and this. Go up. Okay. So now this goes down. And do I need to put this in first? I need to make sure this doesn't okay. come out. Okay, yes, put that thing in. Yep, just like that. Okay, I think that's <laughs> Yes, I think that's it. All right, so this is in place. Um, we lined up the two dots as best we could on the gear. And then this guy goes here um, so that he can catch this little thing here. Hold on, I can't see that. Okay. So that little guy there goes in there. So and we've put grease all over this thing. And so now going to try to get it all back together. Okay. All right. All right. So now this guy so... goes like this, right? Install left piston body assembly over the piston assembly. Attach body together with screws. That literally just fell in there. Yeah, it should. Is that supposed right to happen? At the bottom. Okay. Okay, so now these O-rings go on. 
Yeah, so it says place the O rings on bosses of Valvite. Those right, are the bosses. Like, yeah. Did you know that? Mm hmm. Bosses. <laughs> moving or sliding parts. Is this a moving or sliding part? Yeah. So probably then. Okay, let's put grease on this. Okay. So that was the bottom one. All right, so that's rebuilt. Um, one thing that we noticed as we were putting it together is before when we would when we moved this because we had to move it to to get all the stuff it was it would just slide relatively smoothly and now if you listen you can hear the the, the shh, shh. so before it was not doing that so hopefully that's a good sign um, and hopefully we've got it fixed so we're gonna go kind of stick this back in semi-temporarily <laughs> so that we can um we can just see if we got it right so we'll see how it goes a note about the screws um we thought we we're gonna have to run to the hardware store and get new ones but the kit actually came with new ones and actually this kit came with some parts that we don't know what they are or we don't know where they go so <laughs> so it came with these i don't know if you can see these can you see that? It came with these four plastic washers and two rubber stoppers that it doesn't mention in the book. And it came with two screws. Um, these two and the two we used in the body because we stripped one out. So it doesn't mention either of those in the book. So that's I don't know we'll see how that goes but um but it's all together it seems correct we're gonna give it a go and see if it's right okay all right so we're getting ready to test it here we go all right it's a success so we're gonna call that good here's me slowing it down it looks like it's working great so here's the park function. Yeah, that works exactly the way it's supposed to. Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna call that done. Um, we didn't see any videos showing how to do this. Um, it was not too bad. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be, minus the one strip bolt. <laughs> so we had one strip bolt, but the kit came with a bolt to replace it, so that was good. Um, it. It's actually much, much quieter. So if you hear that one and then you hear our, the one that has not been rebuilt yet. So this one over here has not been rebuilt. So you hear how much more air it sounds like that one is um, leaking. So we may just go ahead and preemptively rebuild that one just to be sure that they're both new and have fresh seals um these valves here were leaking tremendously bad when we first got it that seems to now be fixed so um yeah so we're pretty happy with the kit so hopefully that helps someone out there if you're trying to rebuild one of these um air windshield wiper motors 
All right, so a year later, we've been on the road now for a year and we've used the wipers a ton. We've run into rain quite a bit and we'll just throw the wipers on, it's not a big deal. They've worked great. We did order the kit for the driver's side to rebuild it, but we have not done it yet. We've actually not needed to and it's been working fine. So it is louder than the other one and it doesn't actuate as well. It doesn't like the speed. It's basically just one speed, but it works perfectly fine. So we're just gonna leave it for now. Um, one thing that we did add is a very small ball valve because air was leaking out of these valves pretty quickly. And we did talk to Scott Crosby at the Bus Grease Monkey and he said that's a pretty common hack is people will put in a ball valve just to, when you're going down the road and it's sunny, there's no need for it, you just shut the ball valve off and then air doesn't leak out of those valves and the motors and stuff. And so we have done that and that's helped with the air down a ton. So now it takes a couple, two, three days for it to air down, whereas before it would air down within probably eight hours, maybe less. And so we could actually hear the air leaking out of the valves. Um, so one thing I would replace is those valves. If I were to do it again, knowing what I know now, I've messed around a lot more with the air system and I would actually buy a motorized ball valve um, with a position feedback. So it tells you kind of where it's at. So you can open it just a little bit and it would essentially work very similar to how these work, but then it opens up options for like doing intermittent wiping or you know much more variable over the speed of it and things like that. So that's probably one thing I would change. First of all, these valves are very expensive for what they are and they leak like crazy. So that's kind of a double bad <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but they do work just fine as they are now. If they do go bad, I probably am gonna do that and replace them with those. The other option I looked into was doing electric wipers, which is definitely an option, but it's a much more of an engineering feat to get the correct sweep and all that stuff. So we were getting close to the end of the build. We really didn't wanna re-engineer something, but electric wipers is another very, um, very viable option. So anyway, the wipers themselves though, the motors, everything's been working great. So we are just gonna leave it. We do use it, like I said, a fair amount. Um, we have actually started using Rain-X as well. There's several people that said, hey, put Rain-X on the window, you'll be surprised. And I was surprised, it works, it works very, very well. In fact, a lot of times, if it's just kind of drizzly with the Rain-X, you don't even need to run the wipers at all. So we have been doing Rain-X if we know we're gonna be driving into rain and it's not gonna be crazy, we'll just Rain-X the window. So that is another option and it, we've used it now and it works great. So anyway, that is gonna do it for this video and we'll see you on the next one.